Hello guys, we are back with another video today with myself, ARC Exotics. Now in this video, um, it's actually quite popularly requested. There's been a lot of people ask us for this, so I know I should have filmed it. But basically it is transferring the Madagascan Hissen Cockroach Colony over to a new custom made setup. Now, I didn't film the setup myself um, purely because I didn't actually know how it was going to go I thought I'd trial and error it I was going to do the whole expand and foam and you know go to town on it but I thought it's not really worth it so basically what I used is some leftover polystyrene background from an old exoterra that I had and silicone that to the sides so yeah I didn't really know how it was going to go I didn't want to film it and it not turn out good so I kind of didn't bother but I know for the future now that I definitely should because in my opinion I think it has turned out pretty good so what we're going to do is basically show you the custom built setup and then start to transfer all of the Madagascans over now we only had a couple of them when we first got them from the live food hub and I looked the other day and lifted up their food bowl and the underneath of their food bowl was absolutely infested with babies now there's probably over 60 babies perhaps so I don't know how we're going to transfer them over, but yeah, let's go. So guys, this is the tank. Not that you can see it too well with the reflection of everything, but I will try and film it. Obviously, this is glass, so it reflects back. Um, I'm not really sure what brand of tank this is. I've never actually used the brand before, but if I just move this bag out of the way, I'll show you the inside of the tank. So basically this is just used by silicone, um, all I've done is broken off some old bits of log, silicone that to the side of the glass. Now I cut this old exoterra background to fit perfectly in here and it was pretty tricky because it has a little floating ledge as well. So that worked out pretty hard to cut into that corner there. But we've done a pretty good job, I had some help from my dad, so big shout out to Ian. <laughs> and basically we've left the top with a little gap now the reason we've left the top with a gap like that that was meant to happen because like I say I've never actually this tank hasn't got a brand so I don't know what brand it is but this is the lid okay now this goes on here like this and them clips push down so if I can do it with one hand I'll show you there we go so that is the lid okay now I did have this tank planned for the baby morning geckos and as you can see from this angle already what is the main issue that's right there are holes in it not holes from it being damaged but just holes from how the brackets fit onto the housing unit of the tank itself as you can see here there's holes and the morning geckos would have 100% escaped which is not good because we don't want any lizards escaping and running around the house so yeah basically I thought right we'll keep this tank for something else I bought an exoterra for the morning geckos and that's that so we had this tank left over so doing that little cut there hopefully prevents them from scaling the glass and escaping especially the babies but we'll find out over time. Let's hope not. So as you can see, we've got some bark pieces on the shelf because they will eat away at this and go under it. We've stuck a few little sticks into the actual background and then siliconed them in. That one there, and that one up there. And we've also got one here going across to the other shelf. And then this is the other side. Now, I started to run out of background because we were using the exoterra so obviously what I've done is fitted however much I could down that side but from a front facing point of view it doesn't look too bad at all uh, the glass glare is quite bad at the minute but you can see what I'm aiming for and it doesn't really matter that this bit hasn't got any because they will actually use it as a shelf sit on there and all up there as well and the cat has just made an appearance thanks, good timing <laughs> just scared her as well. Or right, anyway, so yeah, that is basically the tank. So what we've got to do now is transfer them. 
Now, I know Madagascans like a much taller setup and they're in quite a long tub, so they should enjoy this quite a lot. Now, as you can see here on the back, all we've done is just use silicone, pressed it against it, cut it to size so it fit perfectly, and I've left it about a week because I didn't really want to um didn't really want to like risk losing some. I know there are only bugs and beetles, but still it's not the point the, that's sort of irrelevant whatever you're keeping in there you should make sure it is set up for them perfectly so yeah I've left it a little while for the silicone to dry I've checked it today and it's nice and dry so now I've got to have the fun job of trying to transfer everything over so let's go now this is what these guys are currently in and about a week before I spotted all the babies it was just this but now there is tape on the side and there is also a netting that we've put over it because I opened up where they were and all of a sudden there was a baby on here running about, going nuts. And then he squeezed back through the gaps and vanished. So they can obviously escape through there, which is another reason we want to change it. So this net is just a short term fix to prevent it. And basically you can already see that they're taking advantage of the height on that little bit there. So obviously this is about the same length compared to the new one and obviously much much higher and wider so I'm probably going to open it and they're going to run don't know if I can do it with two hands I might try and set you up here somewhere Ow. fly trap great there we go we can kind of see it so when I get attacked by my cat or the camera falls off the unit I don't know what I'd prefer so obviously they're quite jumpy because they're gonna be but I'm gonna make sure there's no babies on the lid and here we go that was more hassle than that was worth but never mind now we are flipped front ways so before I pull the mesh off and scare them all you can see they've got some lovely colour and they're already taking advantage, look at that colour there, already taking advantage of the height. Now as soon as I pull this, make sure there's no babies on the netting. And obviously their food is due to be changed, hence why we've just left it, because they're going into a new setup. But yeah, these guys are lovely. And there we go. And they definitely deserve a new setup and they should really enjoy it. So now, if I lift up this food bowl, you might see loads of babies, you might not. This is when the only time they're not there, you won't see them. But let's find out. Oh, there's a few. See, now that whole base was absolutely covered. And these guys are stressing out because we're being too loud and talking and moving. But look at the colour on that one. Wow. Anyway, sidetracked, let's get into moving them over. I'm not going to film this because it will take too long and the video will be about half an hour, but what I'm going to do is, instead of taking them straight from that setup to the new one, I'm going to get them all into separate pots first like this, have a little head count and make sure they're all in there, I don't want to rush it. So um, yeah, basically I'll be here for about the next five hours, so enjoy. Now this big female is giving me a perfect example of why they are called what they are called and she's not coming quietly. So she's just kind of wedged herself into that corner. And for insects, they have an absolutely unbelievable grip. So that is not something I can just pick off the wood and put in a pot. She will not go unless she wants to, because they have an extremely strong grip. But yeah, hopefully, she's not very happy. So, um, yeah, it's not good for me. So, about 20 minutes later, this is what it looks like now. So, we've got a pot where we don't think there's nothing in, but we'll double check it. We've got a pot where the majority of them are, especially the adult breeders. The old setup, which I'm just scurrying through all the hurt husk to see if there's any babies. And this big bit of tunnel wood, which was here, what we've done, because the babies burrow in the holes, and you'll basically never be able to get them out with full focus there. What we've done is basically snapped it and placed it under here. So 
So we place the big bit under there, going all the way to the back, and another little bit just below that log sticking out. And you can probably see it from the back here as well. Yeah, here you go, this is a bit better. So we've placed a nice big bit there. So if the babies are on it, they can get out. And another little divot bit there. So hopefully that is the majority of them out. Now we did put a few babies in here because they fell with the log. So there is technically already some in here, but don't ask me where. Now, sieving through this some more, I keep coming across loads of odd little babies. But from looking at the water bowl the other day, or the food bowl, there was honestly about 60. And I feel like I've only got about 20, or I've only seen 20. So there could be at least another 20 in that bit of cork there. But other than that, I don't really know where they've all gone. So I guess I'm just going to have to hope they're in there. We'll double look through that bit and we'll have another last sieve through here to see if we can find any. But that is the thing, they blend in so well. And when you do see them, you know if you keep them, the, the little ones are just so fast. So um, I kind of hope I've got them all, but I don't know. I guess we'll see in a minute. So I've had a little scatter through the extra stuff there and it looks like that is a lot. So now what we're going to do is start to transfer them over. Now this is where I shouldn't really do it on camera in case they fall. But, oh my god there's loads. Right, so these guys hopefully won't fall. <gasps> there we go. Not very well focused there, but... What I'm going to do is just place that bit on the floor. And hopefully they'll realise what it is. They'll realise that it's their new setup and they will leave it. Oh, look at that guy down there. He's like, uh, you squashed me. Sorry. Man. And as you can see here, they're already exploring it. You can tell by the antennas when they're exploring. And to be fair, I don't know why we're not even talking about the colour. Look at the burgundy red on that. That is unbelievable. But, um, yeah, they're just coming off slowly, one by one. One of them actually, like, this, this uh, leg actually pricked my thumb and it actually really hurt. But, it's just them little babies in the corners there, which will take all day. So, hopefully, they will come off slowly but surely. And then we've got the second batch here. Right, I just tapped that bit of wood that you saw in a previous clip and about 50 of them fell off. So I think the majority of the babies were on there. And then we've just got this big bit here. Where these are the babies that we've sort of grown on. Oh, I'm trying to film but I'm not even filming. There we go. That's the big guy off. And then it's just the little ones left. And as you can see here, this is already one of the big guys making the most of the height. And this is all new to them, so they should enjoy it quite a lot. And again, not quite as strong colouring in this one as the other one, but still very nice browny sort of colour. And the backs of them just look so shiny. But um, yeah, he's doing well, he's exploring. And all the other babies have scattered, and we've just got these guys left here. So let's add these guys in. This one I can't get him because he's just scurrying too much. This little guy's a cutie. I remember him when we first got him, he's very distinctive. Bit of shoddy camera work, but never mind. There we go, he's on as well. So that is the last of them. These guys are now chilling in their new enclosure. And I think that went pretty smoothly. I'm still not sure about the old tub over there, but we'll have to do something off camera and try and get them out. But yeah, for the purpose of the video, the majority of them have settled in really well.
which is great. And a lot of them, I could use the flash on the camera, but it's not worth it. I'm just going to use it on my phone. A lot of them have nested back down here. I'm yet to see any babies on this little bit, but yeah, they're doing good. So guys, it's been about another 25 minutes, and yes, that is right, I've just hand sieved all of that into the bin, hand by hand, to check for any leftovers. And how many did I come across? Two. And yep, there's only two, and it took a long time, but for example, if this is a male and a female, in a few months to come, these guys breed, give me babies, I've earned so much more babies from keeping these two. And end of the day, they are still pets and they are still living. So yep, I did take the time out to sift through it all and I really hope I haven't missed any. So these little guys will be going in to the setup just there. And they're very, very lucky. So guys, that basically covers the video, but obviously now they are all in this. What are we going to do with this? Now, if you want to drop your suggestions down below what we should house in here, then I will be open to suggestions. I thought of a few things, like millipedes. Uh, on the insect side, you've got millipedes, you've got inverts like scorpions as well would do well. Uh, maybe a tarantula, which doesn't need any arboreal space. Or even something like a grow out tank for maybe a western hognose, Kenyan samboa, you know, something like that. Because that would, that would fit in here, a male western hognose or male Kenyan samboa would do well in here as well. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think we should do with this tank and I will get a reply to you straight away and see how good the ideas are. So guys, that basically covers today's video on transferring the Madagascan hissing cockroaches over to their new custom made setup. Now, again, if you want help with what tank I used, I'm afraid I can't help you because I have no idea what the brand was. It hasn't actually got no brand on it at all, so that is a little bit tricky. Um, that is the perks of Facebook Marketplace, so always look on there for secondhand tanks. This is still in the box as well, so it's in brilliant condition. But other than that, that is basically just a video on transferring the colony over to a new setup where hopefully they will thrive and have even more babies than before. So other than that, I've now got to clear up all the mess which is behind me, which you can't see. So I'm going to have fun doing that. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for another video.